what would you say to people that say humans make crop circles? I would say to some degree, you're absolutely correct, people do make crop circles and lots of them and the um, physical evidence for that is plainly available on the ground for anybody to physically examine. Unlike many uh, types of paranormal or weird like phenomena that get researched around the world, the crop circles are physically manifest there, physically on the ground so we have the opportunity to visit them and do critical analysis. So once we isolate a crop circle as being mechanically constructed, and really to, 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 to be sure about this, one has to get to the actual formation very quickly in the morning on the first day and examine it in the same sense that if the police go to a crime scene, they want to do a critical physical examination of that scene very, very quickly to determine what happened there. Obviously, if I go to a crop circle on the second day and there's been 200 people there walking all over the evidence then it's kind of messed up and we have to just leave that as a maybe possible who knows where for sure that came from so yeah if, as a field investigator i have to get to these events very quickly on the ground physically examine the effects which are left and if that's been made by people for instance you know a man with a plank of wood on his foot crunch 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 flattening out crop it leaves a very particular pattern of damage in the plants and this can be physically observed sure. and measured against crop circles that have been physically produced for TV commercials, movies, this kind of thing. So we have a kind of a benchmark, a base understanding of the physical mechanics of humans creating a crop circle we, so we can take that experience over to any given crop circle that is uh, reported in the summertime and just um, observe the physical effect. It becomes really interesting when we don't see this crunch, 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 breaking so of the what plants. what is your best idea on how the others are made, the ones that are not man-made? Um, all I could really say for sure, to my own satisfaction after 17 years of physical investigation on the ground, is that the process which is used to employed by people to physically create crop circles is um, heavy and mechanical and if the, eff the effect on the ground is obvious. If we take circles that appear to be from some other kind of source, it appears to be something non-physical, energetic, which is physically laying down those plants. If, for instance, if we look at formations in the what we call oilseed rape, I think you call it canola, the yellow flowering plants, very um, thick brittle plants, kind of like celery. Um, it's physically impossible for a man to stamp about on these plants without um, doing severe, severe damage to those plants, you know, scraping the stems, ripping the flowers off with their plank of wood, crushing the stems, makes one horrible mess in the field. So when we see formations in oilseed rape that have no physical crushing, crunching, scraping or breaking, one has to conclude that something else happened there, some kind of apparent energetic process that caused those stems to bend neatly to the ground and arrange themselves in a very particular order for some particular reason. The reasoning is unknown at this time. Is it not the case that the crop circles have been accounted for in history before all this modern technology? Oh uh, yeah, the actual phenomena goes back officially, in the UK at least, the phenomenon only goes back to 1978, that is the earliest claims of um, hoaxing by a pair of people called Doug and Dave who in 1991 splashed onto the world stage media saying we conned the world, we faked all the crop circles, but then when those people were challenged to demonstrate their capabilities in front of the TV cameras, what they physically produced was clearly no answer to the entire crop circle phenomenon. Anybody can really push a shape into a field that really wasn't the point. Really, We were lo looking at physical characteristics of laid plants that couldn't be reproduced, not the actual production of just a shape. But I've seen I've seen accounts of in the 17th century and 18th century etchings and so forth. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are depictions going back to the 16th century in, in old English uh, versions of newspapers, showing um, flattened out or pressed out shapes into um, you know fields basically, and and those were pretty much it was pretty much concluded back in those days that this must have been the work of the devil. And given the belief systems of the time, that's not overly surprising. But interestingly enough, if we just use the 1978 as the benchmark, as the, um, the line where it's drawn for the beginning of the modern phenomena, there's a whole history going back through the um, 20th and 19th century of crop circles. And many of them were actually photographed, you know, from the 1940s even. I used to work actually myself for a charity here in southern England. 
um, called Cheshire Foundation, which was specifically dealing with old um, military personnel and their retirement issues and blah, blah, blah. And um, the amount of old RAF pilots I spoke to that used to fly in, in during World War II, you know, over to Berlin every night, who would see shapes, you know, relatively simplistic, but nevertheless impressions in the landscape, in the wheat fields of southern England during World War II. And this is a time when this country was being blockaded and starved to death. It wouldn't have been considered very mischievous or fun to, you know, to destroy our wheat crops back in those days. So my understanding is that the, the crop circle phenomena is most likely an ongoing situation that has been pretty much happening forever. And the modern iteration has taken it up several steps. And then hoax, human hoaxing gets in on the act. You know, human nature is human nature, egos makes people feel important whatever there's a there's the large-scale hoaxing thing that's been happening since the early 1990s has really um re changed the nature of the subject fundamentally to one where pre-1990 there, there was some really interesting study and investigation going on with the circles and it included government bodies scientific agencies and um, you know the Ministry of Agriculture were very interested in 1980s because they were seeing things that they just could not explain on the ground in the fields. And at that point, it was like a genuine mystery. I remember as a child watching TV, the TV news, and seeing these mysterious circles had appeared, and they had um, scientists and meteorologists in the fields trying to figure out what had actually happened. And then the whole Doug and Dave hoaxing thing came along in 1990, 1991. It kind of coincided with, the, with a massive upsurge in the numbers of circles, the complexity of those circles, and the apparent meaningfulness of those circles. Huge pictograms in, in kind of displaying what seemed to be very ancient symbolism signatures of um, ancient spiritual traditions and things like this. And it, would be, it was becoming... It was becoming really really popular in the international media thousands and thousands of people were descending on these fields and doing whatever they felt like with the crop circles but it was getting a lot of attention and it seemed to be really impacting on the consciousness of people individuals and just getting people really thinking about who we regardless of where those circles were coming from it, it seemed to stimulate something in people to start asking real questions you know the fundamental questions about who we really are where we're from where what our place is in this whole scheme of things why do you think wiltshire is the focus of the crop circles um i mean i, I can, obviously i can only guess but as, as you would have well seen around here there's a huge proliferation of ancient megalithic sites stone circles long barrows and there seems to be an extremely dense clustering of these really, really ancient sites in this landscape here. And my assumption is that the ancient peoples of this region knew that there was something special here, whether that's you know energetic in the land, ley lines, who knows what for sure. But when I believe that this is energetically speaking, that this part of the world is effectively one of the important places in the world where the ancient peoples knew that th this energy or this something converged here and they, they, they erected stone circles in these monuments to trap it, to house it, to use it, who knows what. But it, it, I think the veil is es essentially a bit thinner here than in, say, some other places. Interestingly enough, I've had, like, long, over, over the 17 years of involvement in this subject, I've had, um, you know, lengthy conversations, private conversations with most of the farmers in this region and thus far, every farmer that I've spoken to privately acknowledges that, yes, there's some of this is real. We don't really understand all of these crop circles. We've seen these things in our land going back decades before it became popular. We used to just mow, mow the things out. Nobody ever really saw them. But you stick a TV camera in their face and they're going to say the whole thing is criminal damage and vandalism because if they say anything else, their, their land will be flooded with visitors and tourists. And they really don't want that. It's a pain in the for these people they they do they grow their wheat they cut it and they sell it on the international markets and that's that if that whole hoaxing thing can be separated put to one side yes pretty art maybe inspired maybe looks lovely in this landscape yes but it's still human made stuff and it's not that amazing it's just shapes in fields as opposed to the other stuff which seems to be a physically manifest paranormal related phenomena which is saying something about the nature of human consciousness and human beings at this time to me that's potentially really significant <laughs>